Right here you see a, an above the NPTA using this robotic system. And it's able to walk in a very normal way. Uh, a little bit about the uh, neural interface. So what I'm just showing you now is robotics structures that have their own computer uh, sensors, computational capability. Um, what we're, what we're also thinking about in this field as well is adding some human intelligence to the system. And perhaps putting implants inside the human body, measuring neural information, and using that as an additional sensory input into the, the processing that takes place on the artificial level. So there's a number of ways to link to the nervous system. A, 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 a bi-directional peripheral nervous system one can put implants into the muscles of the residual limb and measure the depolarization of the muscle when it contracts. Um, one can also think about communicating with nerves, the nerve that's been amputated when the nerves was, uh, was amputated. So we, we are now working with others that are specializing in neural technology to link our external robotic systems. <coughs> to uh, these uh, endpoints. So here you see uh, I'm walking. When, when my, my foot's off the ground, I control the position of the ankle. Uh, when my foot's on the ground, there's local controllers that vary the impedance or stiffness of the ankle. That's great because I, I see the steps with my eyes, and uh, I, I decide to point my toe down. Why? Because I want more shock absorption. So I, I see the steps, I fire my muscles in my residual limb, we measure that, it's sent to the computer on the robot, the robotic toe goes down, I get the shock absorption, when I get to the bottom of these steps, I continue to walk again. We're also uh, teaming with others to connect to amputated nerves. Um, here, here's a, an amputated nerve, and what we're doing here is we're putting skin cells and muscle cells uh, inside the body and getting the nerve to grow again, to regenerate, and to innervate the cell bodies. What, what one can then do is put electrodes in here to sense motor intent. One can also stimulate uh, to reflect sensory information from the prosthesis uh, back into the nervous system to give the amputee some sense of uh, tactile. So I'll uh, finish up here with a discussion of running, amputee running. Uh, so, you, so you're here, this, you see these athletes using the cheetah prosthesis, the same prosthesis that the Oscar uses. We, we, uh, there's been just a few studies on amputee running. Um, one study was done uh, uh, recently, it's just about to be published, that measures uh, how much metabolic energy amputees use when they run using these cheetah prostheses. And uh, uh, so in the blue line here is uh, uh, runners with intact limbs. And the red line is runners uh, using the cheetah prosthesis. Um, so what you see uh, here in the vertical axis is related to uh, metabolic energy. So you see there, uh, although the amputee energy is a little higher, uh, they're, they're very, very close. So from these data, we conclude that the cheetah prosthesis does not confer a metabolic advantage at uh, moderate run speeds. Um, we've also done a study looking at the rate of fatigue. It was suggested in Oscar's case because he's faster in the second half of the quarter year than the first half, that perhaps he, he doesn't fatigue at a natural rate. We, we tested this by, by uh, having uh, both uh, Oscar and also athletes with intact limbs uh, run on a, on a treadmill. At a, at a fixed speed, we, we measured the amount of time, the run duration, that the athlete is able to maintain that speed. 
So we start at a very, very high speed, the maximum speed that the athlete can run. We measure how much time they can maintain that speed. And then we uh, uh, reduce the speed, measure the time duration again and again and again. So what you find when you normalize uh, this curve, as you see here, that uh, runners with impact runs, they all collapse on, onto a, a single curve in this dimensional space. We did the same measures on Oscar, and uh, you can see Oscar's points here. And, uh, and, Diamond, uh, diamonds here. It, it, this tells us that uh, Oscar fatigues uh, in a very, very normal way. He does not have a natural uh, ability to, to maintain uh, his, his fatigue levels over long distance runs. So in terms of mechanics, um, the, if you compare the mechanics of uh, an athlete using a cheetah prosthesis to an athlete in the uh, the mechanics are distinct. So uh, one can rate running speed in terms of three terms. Step frequency, uh, the average force that the athlete exerts on the ground, and L sub C, which is the distance the body center moves all the foot's in contact with the ground. So these are the three uh, parameters that are important for running, uh, running speed. So uh, in red here are the data uh, that were collected on Oscar. And uh, the, gray, the gray circles are data from uh, controls of um, athletes with intact limbs. So you see it um, above 8 meters per second. How, how Oscar increases his speed above 8 meters per second is he varies his step, his step frequency. If his step frequency increases, it increases speed. And the, the runners with intact limbs, uh, they increase as well, but not as, as steeply. Um, but what we see here is that Oscar is doing that to compensate for the fact that his average force uh, doesn't change across speed. You see it's, it's flat across speed, where in the runners with intact limbs, their average force increases with increasing speed. We believe this is because the prosthesis that Oscar is using is not really controlled. It's not able to adapt its own stiffness during the foot stroke. We believe that that, that variation in stiffness is very critical for achieving high forces in the ground. But because Oscar's just using passive springs that are just fixed and not adapted, um, he has a constant stiffness. So the only way to go faster uh, is to have a higher step from <laughs> So <clears throat> to solve these uh, mechanical differences, we're now building a robotic running prosthesis in the lab at MIT. So here you see a, a similar composite spring. It's now being used, and now we have a motor system here that can affect uh, the forces on the ground. So here, you, uh, I'll show a video here of uh, this robotic structure. So we're testing this uh, on this giant linear bearing in mass. Um, and here we, we found that we, we have a system where we can vary its stiffness, it can vary its power output. So the dream here is that in the future, you can take, for example, a, a unilateral uh, an amputee, an athlete, you can measure the properties of their biological cell. And then you can program their robotic prosthesis to precisely mimic their biological cell. That's the dream. To completely eliminate any differences between the prosthesis uh, and the biological. So I'll finish up there. Thank you.